There is a simple yet beautiful parable from the Sufi mystic Rabia Basri that illustrates how the sole use of one's logic and reason can be quite erroneous in the search for truth, meaning, or tranquility. In times of fear, desperation, and pain, it is often easy to forget ourselves and then be motivated by these types of qualities which can only further exacerbate the same problems which so many are trying to alleviate themselves from. That is how negative cycles continue to evolve. The best way to stop pain is to cease the actions which bring about its course of fulfillment. In regards to large and complex systems such as those found in modern civilization, it is quite difficult and perhaps nearly impossible to fully express in layman's terms how to fully go about abstaining from these types of actions when so many individuals and variables are involved. This is the reason that parables are used, to try and condense that complexity into something more manageable which can be meditated upon and then worked towards. Since the foundation of such complexity begins at the individual, this is also where it must find its natural resolution. A long time ago, a famous Sufi mystic, Rabia, was searching for something on the street outside her small hut. The sun was setting and darkness was descending as a few people began to gather around her. They asked, What have you lost? What are you searching for? Perhaps we can help. Rabia said, I have lost my needle. One of the people said, Well, the sun is setting now and it will be very difficult to find the needle. Where has it fallen? If we have a general idea of where you lost it, it will be easier to find. Rabia told them, It is better not to ask me that question because actually it has not fallen on the road at all. It has fallen inside my house. Everyone started giggling as if she was joking. Then a skeptic said out loud, We always knew that you were a little insane. If the needle has fallen inside the house, then why are you searching for it on the road? For a very simple reason. Inside the house there is no light, and on the outside a little light is still there, Rabia replied. The people laughed and started dispersing. Rabia called them back and said, Listen, that's exactly what you are doing. I was just following your example. You go on seeking bliss in the outside world without asking the most fundamental question. Where exactly have I lost it? After a pause, she continues. You have lost it inside, and yet you are looking for it on the outside for the very same reason. Your senses are outward bound. Your ears hear sounds on the outside, your hands touch things on the outside. That's the reason why you are searching outside. For a very long time, I was also just searching on the outside. But the day I searched inwards, I was surprised. That is where I lost it, and that is the only place. It can be found. The parable is incredibly significant. How to find peace in a world blinded by chaos. The external world is built upon a foundation of sand, and there has always been this desperate idea that the structures which are continually raised upon this foundation can be saved once and for all. Our bliss will be found and immortalized outside of ourselves. This concept has been proven to be incorrect time and time again. This society will not be the exception and nor will the next, because the premise of continuity is flawed. We cannot destroy the same life which we want to save. That which can only be sought internally can never be discovered externally. Thus, the paradox of our reality is ever at war with itself, and the resolution is never attained. In this world, 
we see a species in constant conflict with itself, in a pervasive competition for resources that is never satiated. Civilization itself is the Leviathan which consumes and corners the entire earth, and projects a desire to continue indefinitely in a single trajectory until the entire earth is broken. Everything that is happening right now is a consequence of this trajectory. Peace, abundance, happiness, tranquility, these concepts are sought by continually expanding outwards, as if there is actually a magical endpoint to be reached that will satisfy the desire for such qualitative fulfillment. The user is not separated from the used. Hence the question, do we use technology or does it use us? If one can fathom the correlation, there can then be seen the crux of the present issue. This is also why there are those that feel that they are alone. Outcast, rejected, misunderstood, and even emotionally depleted. Searching for answers in a chaotic world of darkness that falsely believes itself to be enlightened. Still, a little further along this lonely path are those that have a possibility of latitude afforded to very few that recognize its opportunity. Those who have been completely and totally heartbroken. Those who with broken heart, carrying these shattered pieces while walking a much nobler path in solitude, can finally begin what has always been called the great work. That destiny which has been exalted by those that seek a more enlightened state has never been found in the madness of the crowd but only in the stillness of the individual. For only when humbled in such a manner can one see that force which comprehends more than any the effects of the heart, the earth. Spiritual attainment is not an easy assignment, and any who promise or indicate otherwise are the guarantors of heavenly mirages feeding a diet of empty calories to the famished. Think upon it. Has anything of significant value in one's life required little to no effort? Why would the principles of inward levity be any different? There are truly no royal roads in this regard. To be called to walk alone should be considered an honor, not a sentence to feel self-pity and despair. Thus, if the world of mankind is rejecting you because you feel out of place, it is more than likely for a good reason. You are being rejected because you no longer want to follow the illusions and the chaos. You no longer fit into a world that caters to dreams that are built upon the foundations of war and death. As Jiddu Krishnamurti so notably stated, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. Hence, be in the world but not of it. New dimensions of the heart then begin to open up, and a broader understanding of life is able to take shape. The paradox can be comprehended that only when we are completely alone do we finally see that we were never alone. Aloneness is furthermore a completely different phenomenon from a tyrannically forced model of isolation based upon fear. The isolated individual can still be in the crowd, and their actions will most likely remain selfish, while the one that feels the pull towards a higher destiny changes their quality to that of selflessness. To then give selflessly, from the heart and without the need for thought, which creates that which can be called choiceless action. The lost needle thus represents the needle on a compass which never pointed outside of oneself, but directs us instead to worlds of a far more profound nature than what is conventionally followed. The journey from head to heart, the external to the internal commences, and the truth has obtained the opportunity to finally be raised from its tomb to create its own destiny.